and welcome to Theorycraft. My name is Ben, and if you enjoy all things nerdy, then welcome to Nerdverna. Today's episode is discussing the Marvel What If series, the animated series that is supposed to be linked to the MCU in some means, but in my opinion has been quite chaotic in terms of how they came about it. So... The original idea from what we heard as fans was that it was more dedicated as an anthology series series sort of seeing the what if scenarios of certain events had changed drastically compared to what has happened in the MCU such as Steve Rogers not becoming Captain America but Peggy Carter becoming Captain Britain and other drastic changes to certain character histories and that would have been fine I would have loved to have seen just countless versions of certain things going to arrive within certain timelines or universes, whatever. But the issue that lies with it, in my opinion, why it was a great series, was it was trying to replicate the magic that the MCU has already done being a connective universe, which only works if it was all based in one universe or these anthology series episodes that storylines were based on but they weren't each episode was dedicated to a different reality and a different universe and therefore a different story wouldn't match up to the next one and to the next one so it while it was interesting to have it connect together at the end to try and obviously have a big battle with showcasing all the characters that we'd met so far i find that it didn't work because one Covid did ruin a lot of the planning for this, like a lot of things. Covid has ruined a lot of filming, planning and designing of a lot of shows and movies. But secondly, it felt like they were trying to rush the concept of connectivity within a series that really didn't have a reason to be connective until like the last two episodes. Prior to, obviously, meeting Vistron, or Ultra, Ultimate Ultron, whatever you want to call him, it was, there was no need for the connectivity. Like, it was quite good to have the characters of each story have their own little universe to themselves, and that was it. But it just doesn't seem to make much sense when you have Ultron just randomly be able to see throughout, through reality itself, to realise, oh, there is more universes that need saving. Obviously, saving is completely different to what we actually call saving. But the thing is, it just... It was a very bizarre way in which he was set up to be the bad guy. If anything... I would have preferred if there was slightly more hints per episode of him becoming a threat than it leading to the last two episodes explaining why he was a threat. I mean, we had, at the end of Thor's episode, showcase him coming to his universe to invade to do whatever it was going to be. The next episode, obviously, explaining who he was, what he was. But it... It conflicts a lot in terms of if the Watcher was perceived by Vistron, then why wasn't he able to stop him sooner? I mean, yes, the whole point of Uwatu the Watcher was that he does not intervene, but he was able to intervene enough to stop him. And stopping him, I don't know, it fell a bit flat. I mean, the key aspect that the Infinity Stones have both within the comics, and they tried using in What If, but didn't seem to make a lot of sense, is that the Infinity Stones only seem to work within its nature universe. That's the whole point, because it's fragments of each segregated universe, hence why it only works within that reality. So then, it didn't make any sense to me as to how Vistron was able to go throughout the multiverse with his universe's section of Infinity Stones to conquer other realities, because surely, even if he was able to trans 
transfer to different universes, his Infinity Stones wouldn't work, and yet they did. But this is where the plot logic gets even more screwy, and this is why I wanted to showcase this in, in case anybody didn't actually see the series. So we were supposed to have had an episode to dedicate towards explaining Gamora, and Gamora was supposed to be, I believe, an episode before Vision, well, Vistron basically came about, but it never happened. But in the last episode, we get a version of Gamora and Tony Stark. Supposedly, Tony Stark is the version of Tony where during Avengers, obviously, goes through the wormhole and he gets rescued by the Hulk. In the What If episode, it was What If, I believe, What If Tony didn't survive the wormhole and ended up in Sakaar, hence why the suit was a bit bulkier and more Hulk-like, but I digress. So within this episode, her and Tony basically make the Infinity Crusher, which I wish, that, I don't understand why they didn't think of this in the Infinity War movie, but I, I suppose it's just plot logic, whatever. But they devise this gadget, which is made for the Nidalee Armory, very cool little concept. They use it on Vistron, and then they go, oh, bugger. Yeah, it only works on Infinity Stones from my native universe. Right. Okay. But why is it that the Infinity Stones can work in any universe, but the Infinity Crusher can't? I, it seemed a bit of an open, like, plot logic, to my opinion. Like, it... <laughs> I think they were trying to make this episode drag out as long as they could. But the thing is, at the very end of it, it was the... It wasn't like they beat the bad guy, it was just they trapped the bad guys in a bubble to then give to Doctor Strange, which I will get to later on. But the thing is, I just don't understand how, if this is the gadget that's supposed to be able to help them, why is it it can't do what it needs to do with any Infinity Stone, but any Infinity Stone can work in any universe? It sort of conflicts with the logic, but that's just me. I mean, it was a great episode, don't get me wrong. I did thoroughly enjoy the What If series. But the issue that I have is that they... <sighs> They sold it to fans as an anthology series, kind of like the Twilight Zone, where it wasn't connected in any way, it was just showcasing what could be, what may have been, so on. But then they decide, towards the very end, to connect it in some way, which could have worked really well, but just seemed a bit half-assed. I mean... You get like a nice sneak, sneak preview of Pepper joining up with the Wakandan Dorma Malage to take down Killmonger. He's not there anymore because obviously Uwata took him and made him part of Guardians of the Multiverse. But it just seemed odd that they had the potential to obviously make it a connective storyline in some way for each universe to coalesce. But it was a bit last minute. I mean, the only thing that I thought was quite clever was making Armin Zola the one to take over Vistron, which I think did work to a degree. Like, I've waited and I've waited to see a proper version of Armin Zola in his robotic body for a while, because within the Winter Soldier movie, he was just a very old computer, and his mind was implanted in that, and that's as far as we got with Armin Zola. But the idea of him being able to take over the Synthesoid body was quite cool, but again, it's the connectivity within the concept of what they were trying to do seemed to have sort of contradict itself, because in the episode where we find him, obviously... 
he's uploaded to one of Hawkeye's arrows, and then he gets uploaded to one of the Ultron drones. So my thought was that he was going to integrate himself via the drone when Vishon came back to the universe that he was originated from, but he doesn't. So then by that logic, that means that there's two versions of Armin Zoda? Because they don't explain whether he's literally able to diverse himself through different technologies or whether it's just one version of himself that can upload from the drive. Because at the end of that episode, he's still in the drone body and Black Widow is trying to keep it safe for when Vizstron comes back. So then why does she have the arrow that he got uploaded up to in the first... It, it just bugs me when they seem to be trying too hard to build up a plot like this, but forget the minor details that they've already pre-existed in the other episodes. But, I don't know, I mean, I think the whole point of this episode was that yes, the bad guys were defeated, but it doesn't mean they won't come back. I think they're going to play on the idea that maybe in the future, whether it be the live action or whether it may be in the What If series at a later date, if they do get more seasons from it, to make both Armanzola and Killmonger come back in some way. I mean, it is going to be difficult because both of them are essentially trapped. I mean, I did like the idea of Killmonger getting this suit and wanting to... Basically, he's power hungry. Like, he's never going to be satisfied. He is a typical bad guy where he wants more and more power just to make sure that he can be the one supreme. Which is ironic because he's obviously fighting Armin Zola, which has the same sort of mentality due to being a Nazi. But there we go. But, I don't know. Again, it just seemed a bit half assed towards the end of the episode where. They just integrate this idea that, yeah, Killmonger wasn't really going to be helping anybody but himself, which is part of the character, I'm sure. But it just seemed a bit half-assed when they built up so much of the battle where they were all working together, and then it took about five, ten minutes of him fighting with Armzola to then eventually get trapped in the bubble here. Now... This, I'm sure, is going to be crucial along the way at some point, whether Doctor Strange is going to, well, Doctor Supreme Strange, whichever you want to call him, may end up having trinkets through the multiverse where he may end up being, I wouldn't say a full-on get a bad guy, but a bad guy enough to be deemed dangerous. Because if he's able to create pocket universes and prisms like this, to trap people in moments of time or whatever, then the question begs you as to whether or not how is he going to be, or why is he going to be wanting to do this more, whether he's working with Uwatu, or whether he's doing it for his own self selfish reasons, because he's destroyed his own universe by doing this same thing. But again, it's it's very odd. Like there was a lot of a lot of open doors and windows to plot later on, which I'm sure will probably showcase in the next season. But it's very bizarre regardless. I mean, the whole idea that Doctor Strange Supreme basically worked with Uwatu was because, one, he wanted to make a point that he should have helped out sooner. Two, he just wanted to try and find a way of fixing his own universe, even though he, could, he didn't. And three, it was just because... It's just part and parcel of him being an arrogant character. He likes to show off. So I am curious as to whether or not this version of Doctor Strange is going to be in the MCU at a later date. Because it's shown that he can leave his universe, but he didn't stay out of his universe. It's very odd. Like He had all the potential to leave his universe and find somewhere else to go but he happily went back to his pocket universe that had next to nothing left other than him safeguarding these two. Which made no sense, 
unless it's something more important down the road. But, yeah, I mean, it was a great series to watch. I just wish they could have been a bit more decisive in terms of what they were trying to get out of the series. Don't get me wrong, it was an amazing series to watch, and it was very sad that obviously it was the last acting that Chadwick Boseman did as Chitala. He was an amazing Black Panther. It's, it's just a very bizarre series that wasn't sure of itself, I think, most of the time. I would have preferred the idea of it just being individual stories without the necessary of connectivity. But then, I suppose it may pay off later on down the road if they do try to make more of the idea of the connection between the multiverse. I think there is in the works the idea of Secret Wars, which is obviously a multiversal story within comics, of Marvel Comics, where different aspects of reality got merged together to create Battleworld. Whether or not they are going to play that brilliantly, do that to that extent, I have no idea. But as I've said many a times on this channel so far, there is a lot of the multiverse coming to Marvel, and it's going to be quite important, I think, in the next five years, if not the next ten years, because it took ten years for them to build up to Endgame. So whether or not they're going to build up to anything bigger than that, who knows? But there is a lot more to come when it comes to Marvel. I just wish that they try to be more decisive of what they were planning with the What If series. And if anything, it would have been just fine to have each episode on its own and not need a big bad like Big Tron. It, it wasn't necessary. It was cool. It was very clever. But it wasn't necessary unless it's going to pay off in the MCU later on. But there we go, folks. That's my little rant for today. Thank you for joining me, and if you have any ideas, please drop us a comment down below of what you think I should talk about next. Hopefully Jack will be joining me soon in the future. He's still dealing with some family issues at the moment, and that's not really an issue I can talk about. But there we go. Thanks for joining. Subscribe, click like, and we'll see you all soon.